This is the third of our six training sessions. We're halfway there and I hope you're feeling more and more confident in your ability to actually do what God has asked us to do, to go and make disciples in the places we live, work, and play. So get out your trainee guide because we're going to talk about confidence today and focus on what can be the most difficult part of having a gospel conversation, the transition. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can get from an everyday conversation to a gospel conversation. Let me just tell you up front that this tool we call the three circles works best when someone shares a problem, issue, or concern. It's a relational and conversational model, so it works best when you have a relationship with someone that leads to a meaningful conversation. I'm not saying that there won't be times that a complete stranger tells you his or her deepest, darkest fears and concerns. However, it's more likely that people will open up to you if they actually know you. And this means that we need to know some far from God people. This is the first hurdle that some of us need to jump over. Many of us live, work, and play around far from God people, but we don't go out of our way to build relationships with them. We have to be the ones who are willing to go out on a relational limb. Next, we have to be the ones who are willing to turn everyday conversations with those people into gospel conversations. People may freely share problems, issues, or concerns, but it's doubtful they will bring God into it. But this is our part. There's no question that this is going to be a lot easier for some of you than it is for others. Some of you are breaking out into a cold sweat right now. It's not easy, I understand that. But remember what we talked about the first week? It's the Holy Spirit who fills believers to do what he did the very first day he showed up on the scene. It's the Holy Spirit who filled Peter, the one who had just denied knowing Jesus to a little girl. He filled him with boldness to proclaim the gospel to thousands of people. This is the same Holy Spirit who indwells you. It's the same Holy Spirit who indwells me, and we have to ask him to give us his boldness to seize opportunities to turn everyday conversations into gospel conversations. The opportunities will come because we live in a broken world. I don't think I have to tell you that. Every day we hear about another international or national tragedy. Every day divorces are finalized, drug addicts overdose, loved ones are diagnosed with cancer, a woman loses her job, or a man loses his house. I don't say all this to depress us, but rather to remind us that brokenness is all around us. Brokenness is caused by our own personal sin, by the sins of those close to us, and by the sin that results from just living in a fallen world. Sin splatters, but there's hope. All of this brokenness gives us opportunities to turn everyday conversations into gospel conversations. When people start telling you that they're afraid to travel because of the latest terrorist attack, when they share with you the heartbreak they experienced over their divorce, or when they ask you what they're going to do about their rebellious teenager, these are all gospel opportunities. People are already acknowledging the second circle that we call brokenness. We know God is calling us to action. I like to say when that happens that our spiritual spidey senses start going off. We know that we need to say something, but we don't know what to say and the moment is fleeting. And so we mumble, oh, pray for you. And then we just quickly move on. We walk away from conversations like that knowing we just blew it. We just missed our opportunity to be God's ambassadors. All believers are called to be about God's business of putting broken people and broken lives back together again. God tells us this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 where St. Paul writes, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And then he says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This may be a familiar passage of scripture to you, but remember that it's written to a struggling church full of new believers. None of them had been to seminary. They're the Joes, not the pros. In that chapter, as Paul instructs these new Christians, he uses some form of the word reconciliation five times to describe the work of the gospel in the lives of repenting and believing Christians. Reconciliation means to take things that have been broken apart and put them back together. Go ahead and write this down. God has fixed us to be fixers. Before I go any further, 
Let's ask a few diagnostic questions to help us identify the hurdles we have to overcome to become more effective ambassadors to our broken world. Hurdle number one, how much do you desire to tell others the good news about God making a way for us to get right with Him? The Bible teaches us that Christ's love motivates us to share the gospel. Does Christ's love compel you to share the gospel with others? Rate your desire on a scale of one to 10, one being very little desire and 10 being a burning desire. Write the number down next to the word desire on your listening guide. Okay, number two, how confident are you in your ability to communicate the gospel to others? One being not confident at all and 10 being very confident. Write that number next to confidence. Three, finally, how often do you actually share the gospel? One being almost never and 10 being regularly. Write that next to obedience. Now let's evaluate. Do you have a desire problem, a confidence problem, or an opportunity problem? Chances are you wouldn't be here if you have a desire problem. You, you may have an opportunity problem, and we're addressing that by challenging you to pray for and build relationships with far from God people. Most likely, it's our confidence problem that holds most of us back. When someone shares a problem, an issue, or a concern with us, they are basically inviting us to comment. This is why we need a plan to transition the conversation. We need to develop our transition statements, memorize them, practice them, and be ready to jump that hurdle, transitioning the conversation to the gospel. We train people to say something like this. I haven't been through that exact thing, but I have had similar problems. Could I share with you something that's really helped me? Notice that we ask permission to share something that has helped us. We aren't forcing our beliefs on them. It's up to them to give us permission or not. We put the ball in their court. Now, some people think it's forced to practice a transition statement. They argue it might hinder the flow of the Holy Spirit. Well, I would argue that a well-practiced transition clears the way for the Spirit's boldness to get the gospel in all kinds of situations. It's kind of like taking driver's ed. I don't know about you, but where I grew up, we had this fenced off parking lot in the back of the school where we learned to drive. We drove around slowly in the parking lot, carefully avoiding the orange cones until our teacher was satisfied that we could be trusted on the open road. Even if you didn't take driver's ed at school, it's doubtful that your parents just threw you the keys and told you to hit the interstate. We practice in ideal situations so that we can be successful in real world situations. Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to write down our well-planned transition statements and then practice them until we've memorized them. Are you ready? Okay, the example goes like this. I haven't been through that exact thing, but I have had similar problems. Can I share something with you that's really helped me? So let's get to it. This time we'll do a role play. Your facilitator will help you with this, but basically it's gonna go like this. One person comes up with a problem, issue, or concern and shares it with the other person. That person then uses the transition statement to turn the conversation to the three circles and goes through the three circles. Now again, it may feel a little awkward, but we practice in here so that we can have more real gospel conversations out there. Now once you practice, your facilitator will give you some time to work on your transition statement, celebrate stories of the conversations you're having, and assign you next week's personal training practice. So partner up, it's time to get those reps.